Let's talk about architecture a little bit. Let's talk about light in buildings and how we can have light in buildings after we don't have electricity and LED bulbs. We want to really see into the future. And we want our buildings to last for like 600 years. So we should design them for the most primitive conditions that will potentially be occurring in the future. Uh, I mean, we only have electricity on a mass scale for a very short time. And there's lots of reasons to think that it won't be available later, even though we won't have the ability to make solar panels or have LED lights. So, uh, what I was thinking was, well, skylights are an awfully great sounding way to get light into a building, but they're going to break eventually or be destroyed. Maybe by a big hailstorm, maybe just by solar radiation if they're not made out of glass, like polycarbonate, my polycarbonate in my house is already going bad, and I haven't even had it for 20 years. Uh, actually, I have had it for about 20 years. And it's, it's, I think, warranted for 30, and the years go by quickly. So I feel kind of dumb that I have a solution on my roof that is noisy and rain, and that will go bad later. And then, then it will be compromised, and the roof will rot. It already has leaks anyway. So, you know, I'm, I'm more keen on concrete roofs anyway. And I want concrete to last longer, and if, if it gets wet, then it tends to rust the rebar that gives it some structure, and then concrete can fail. So that's why I'm interested in basalt rebar. You can look up basalt rebar. I've never personally tried it, but it's not made of metal, so it doesn't rust. And there may be some other options as well, like how can we build concrete and have it last? Uh, also, a little off topic here, but uh, apparently they've rediscovered how the Romans made concrete and that's superior. I forgot how they did it, but there was articles and things about it. Um, so what I was thinking was, there's always this belief that your south-facing windows are the most important light. I'm kind of disagreeing with that. Now, I know that on the south side of the building, it's going to get more light. I'm in the northern hemisphere. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't tell you where I'm at, but that's a pretty big area, so it doesn't narrow it down too much. Uh, and the thing is, if I have overhanging eaves, which I want for rain issues, uh, then I'm not going to get a lot of sun through the south side of the building. I'm going to get more on the southeast and southwest sides for a bunch of the year. And so I want to maximize light coming through those when the sun is low in the sky. And of course, where the sun is in the morning or in the evening is going to depend on the time of year because it moves, right? Based on your latitude and stuff. So what I want is a window that's pointed between the equinox settings location in the winter and the summer equinox. And so it would be the solstice, I guess. So the rising and, and setting spot on the solstices. That is where I point my window uh, that faces southeastish and southwestish. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Anyway, so I want to save the south side, not for light, unless I put a greenhouse there, which I should plan for that greenhouse to eventually fall apart, even though I wouldn't be so dumb as to put up a plastic greenhouse. Uh, I would do it with glass, and maybe some of that would be frosted glass in the top so that it's not as harsh as sun when it is sunny, and it would light up really well, and it would still heat up. And it could still have on the side a, a tilted part of it that lets a lot more sun into there so that it would heat from there. But I'm actually more interested in, if we're going to go, because we have to plan for the now, and we have to plan for this post-apocalyptic future. You know, if there is one, which there might not be. Uh, in fact, a meteor just hit today. In, well, it didn't hit. It was a, it was a meter-long meteor. Oh, sorry, an asteroid. I think whatever it is, meteor or asteroid, I forgot the difference, has to be at least a meter to count. It, otherwise, it's a meteorite if it's smaller. So it must be a meteor then. What the hell's the difference? I don't know. Rocks from the sky. They only found out about it like hours before it happened. I think the first... As the first alert was five hours before, 
and uh, so you know if we ever do get a meteor hitting we're screwed but this one burned up in the atmosphere over the Philippines and it did no damage some people got some pictures so they had at least enough warning to get some decent pictures that's a good thing uh, anyway back to light I was thinking about on those east and west facing windows well first of all we could do hexagonal buildings so we may have walls that actually if we orient the hex hexagon in the right way we may have walls that actually point in the exact correct directions that's another matter I was also thinking on the east and west sides of hopefully a fairly large building because we want uh, to have the envelope be larger we don't want to make t a bunch of tiny buildings uh, the bigger one we make the easier it is to keep it at a stable temperature especially since we're going to dig the building half in which uh, we may want to do on a southeast facing slope and I have some of that in some really nice spots um, I'm not going to worry about view from inside the building I want to put decks on top the, the, uh, if the top is concrete I want it to be walkable so that I'll have space up there and I'll plan for that it might even be slightly inclined so water flows off of it which would make it weird to walk on and I put walls around it so nobody falls off and breaks our legs or something dumb like that uh, and uh, I was thinking on the east and west sides you could make a wall that was angled in exactly the right way to catch the, the southern sun when it's high in the sky and we don't have it on the south side unless we have a greenhouse there but that's a different matter uh, and that would reflect and we would paint it white right with the with the brightest white we can we could find the most reflective white it would be blindingly white and and it would uh, reflect as much radiation from all over the spectrum into the building at that part of the building that gives you really well lit spaces longer in the day and and that could actually be curved in a way where it had a huge amount of light flowing in to those windows now it almost sounds scary like I don't want to make a death ray out there to concentrate the solar beams inside the building and fry whatever is inside however in general in a building that's partly dug in so I'm already taking care of coolness right it's not overheating in my climate and this is all dependent on your climate right it's gonna depend on the specifics but I know this climate really well now and uh, so yeah, I have these curved walls on both the, the east and west sides that don't block the setting sun but they are exactly angled and it could be it would be curved I assume to to direct all of those rays into those windows shooting them into the building and then hopefully that would shoot far into the building because we've changed the direction of the rays and so it would actually light up a bigger space than I mean all day than, than we could otherwise uh, light up now I wouldn't be able to do it on the east side during sunset or on the west side during uh, dawn but you'd have to do something weird with that to get that I know there's some town somewhere in like Scandinavia where it was in it god damn it fucking shit to trip over here everywhere and uh, they're, they're in like a valley it's a dark valley and part of the year is already too dark there anyway like probably a bunch of it and so they're really in bad shape and so they actually installed big mirrors on their ridges to shine light into the valley and I saw pictures and it certainly looks successful and that's what got me thinking about this but then I was thinking mirrors are gonna go bad over time and so I want to use something else um, and they have special paints now that we would not have access to in the future but we can always keep it white somehow like with Cal but there's some white dirt over there that's when it dries it's white when it's wet it's gray I'm not sure what that is I need to do chemical tests on it to find out but uh, I like that better than skylights we could still make skylights for now and have a big light shaft that comes into the building and in the very center of the building the darkest part and shoot it way down into like the darkest areas uh, with the knowledge that someday those will fail and that we have to make sure we plan for rain issues to not uh, destroy anything so any rain that, like let's say we didn't have the window there it has to be ready for rain to come pouring into it and then that rain just goes flowing off in the correct place there can be channels and stuff um, and that and we just plan for that to be okay 
if we don't plan for that and the skylights fail, then eventually uh, we're messed up because, uh, yeah, you have to plan for failure. All the, all the normal systems you expect, all of civilization stuff will fail. And so if it didn't work 400 years ago, I don't want to do it now. I think about 400 years ago quite a bit. Uh, actually, 200 years ago. Yeah, like 1800. Like when I think about what's the optimal population for the planet, I think it would probably be around a billion. Because we had that population at one time, and we were approaching unsustainability, but that's when we started, just began starting to use oil, causing the population to spike upward, like in a crazy way. So I think one to two billion is a very reasonable target for population. Way off topic from light inside a building. Have we covered it? Yes. We plan for systems of fail. We use the east and west side so that we get the earliest light of the day inside the building and the latest light of the day to come in as well. The earliest is more important because we really want that light because it's going to heat up our, our, our building, which was getting colder. And if it's dug in, it's going to be kind of cold in the most dug in spots. So we're trying to balance out the, the entrance of solar radiation into the building uh, and the uh, and the coolness of the earth and we get to live in the middle at like 70 degrees Fahrenheit 20 degrees Celsius something like that you know we want to be at a comfortable temperature this is for the humans uh, of course by the building we would have root cellars that would keep it kept as cold as possible different whole task there part of the building we want really cold like big ones walk in with a tunnel from above so that cold air can't escape and hot air can if you open the door so uh, I think that's it oh no it's not it's not the other thing is for heating and it's okay to overheat spaces at times I mean one of the dangers of passive solar is you could create a, a, a solar oven and, and your people want to be in it but we can always open a lot of windows so we have to be able to vent heat out easily so we'll, we need a plan for that to just be able to completely change that. And we can have whole walls, you know, where we're channeling heat into part of the building, making it too hot. And then whole walls we could remove if we know we're always getting it too hot. So we could make it a building actually we can adjust after we build it. I mean, of course, we'll make the best guesses we can and talk with engineers and smart people. But, uh, you know, we should have ways that we can make it colder or hotter um, somehow. Also, we want places that are too hot because... I mean, even here in the shade, in the hottest time of year, it can be kind of cold. And then when it, the rains come and it's, and it's uh, moist, you know, we, we, it gets colder. So there's, there's a lot of issues to consider. Um, I don't have to worry a lot about humidity. Um, such a building would dry itself out really well, which is great. Um, on the south side, if I really want to make a really hot space... I have a magic solution, and this should blow anyone's mind. I have a bunch of solutions based on this, and it's a technology called the uh, Evacuated Tube Solar Hot Water Heater. Or in, you can just call it a solar hot water heater. But the point is, the ones I have available, that they're now made in mass, they're quite common, is it has a vacuum around the tubes. The, the black tube has a glass tube around it. It's a vacuum within. A vacuum is a perfect insulator. So all the radiation is hitting the black part, the, in, in the water in the black tube, uh, heating it up, and none of that heat can escape. That heat then goes up the, the angled tubes into a big thermos-like thing. From the thermos-like thing, because I don't want to have to revamp this, I don't want to get fancy with it, I want to keep it very simple. It goes from the thermos thing, in an insulated pipe, into the, into the envelope of the building, uh, moving that heat inside the building all the hot water is moving slightly upward it doesn't have to be a big up so that that just has to be a little bit lower you could put it at the same level as the ground as long as it went up to a thermal mass that was slightly higher than it which could be in the walls a lot of people do this in the floors for radiant floor heating i'm actually concerned we would overheat the building this way and so i have to do smaller experiments before i design a large building that that relies on these and really, I want to make sure I don't rely on them because 
I expect those the vacuums will fail at least. If they don't get hit by anything, they could last a very long time, but you know, it won't last hundreds of years. You're not gonna see these things, 200 year old ones. And so then I'm thinking about having a deck on the south side that has water in it. And then that water is sealed within that, right? But it can get up out of that chamber into a hotter spot, hotter water that's inside the building. And so this would be like a deck, black, black tinted deck with like channels in it of water and not necessarily very, very deep because we want it to heat up, whatever the right depth is for being able to heat it up a lot during the day. Um, and then have it strong enough to walk on. Although I don't know if I want to be walking on totally black stuff in some of the days here because the sun can get very harsh, but whatever, different problem. Well, actually it's a real problem, but I want to make something that melts your shoes. I don't think that would happen. No, it wouldn't melt your shoes, but you probably wouldn't walk on, on a barefoot in, in, dur during certain times of the year. Um, and that's, that's, that's not about light, that's about moving heat in. And that's how I would be using the south side. Greenhouse or uh, solar hot water heaters. Either one of those would be great. Have we covered it? Um... Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've got lots of other ideas that I could do now, but I, I'm just worried we'll use technology that won't really work in the future. So I don't want to set ourselves up for failure. <laughs>